Morning everybody. Um, I thought you might like to join me in morning prayer this morning. Um, so if you'd like to, do carry on listening. Um, and actually you might like to just listen, to sit back and listen rather than uh, watch. Although you've got me here on video, um, it might be better to, to relax and listen rather than um, be distracted by what's on the screen. I'm going to use morning prayer um, from this booklet, which many of you have. It's also available to download online um, if you would like to use it. Um, but uh, you, you can just listen, you don't need to follow uh, word for word particularly. I, I'm going to slightly shorten morning prayer today by not reading all of the readings um, because we will be here forever. But I'll tell you what they are so that you might like to read them yourself in your own private um, and quiet time today. The psalm set for today is Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord for he is gracious. Um, and it tells the story of the Israelite people um, and all that God has done for them. The Old Testament reading set for today is from the book of Exodus. It's chapter 25 verses 1 to 22. So you might like to read those later. I will read the Gospel reading, which comes from Luke's Gospel, and I'll tell you more about that when we get there. So, let's pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, Set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead. You have died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. You have died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth and Christ shall give you light. When Christ, our life, appears, you will appear with him in glory. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Amen. So our reading for this morning is from Luke's Gospel. It's chapter 1, and it's verses 57 to the end. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbours and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, No, he is to be called John. And they said to her, But none of your relatives has this name. And they began motioning to the his father, to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And all of them were amazed. But immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue freed, and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all their neighbours, and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, what then will this child become? For indeed, the hand of the Lord was with him. Then his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. And this reading uh, from Luke's Gospel then goes into what um, is known as the Benedictus or Zechariah's Song or in your booklet, um, you'll have it as the Gospel Canticle, um, because we say it after we've read the Gospel. And uh, it's traditional to say this Benedictus every single morning of the year, no matter what season we are, we are in, we use uh, this Benedictus. Um, and if you're familiar with Matins on a Sunday morning, um, which we say at Chilworth uh, every other week, um, you, you'll know that we also say the Benedictus um, every morning then as well. 
So we will read it. It has um, an, an acclamation at the beginning and the end um, for the different seasons. So the acclamation for the gospel season goes, You have set us free to worship without fear, holy and righteous in your sight. And the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of his servant Israel. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will be go, go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. You have set us free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous in your sight. So as the Benedictus is part of morning prayer every day, it is also part of our Gospel reading today. And Zachariah as we heard in that Gospel reading, is praising God and prophesying to what John is about to come, become. Um, and that name, John, um, that was chosen um, by Elizabeth and Zechariah, or they're chosen by God, and uh, they were told that that was the, going to be the name of their child, um, means God has been gracious. And in those days, names were so incredibly important. They, they um, told people what family you came from, which is why all their neighbours and friends were so surprised when he wasn't to be called Zachariah, um, because that would be bring, taking on the family name. And John was nowhere in the family, so why were they going to call their child John? Um, and of course, they knew. Um, Elizabeth knew from the very beginning this child in her womb was to be so special, and um, Zachariah perhaps is not coming to the realisation until now. Um, and if you remember, um, he didn't believe the angel when he was told that Elizabeth was to bear a child, and so he was struck dumb for all this time. <clears throat> so it is only today, on the eighth day of um, John's birth, that Zachariah is able to speak for the first time. And his first words are... John, God has been gracious to us, and then praising God for all that he has done. It's, it's a little bit odd that um, all throughout this week our morning prayer readings have been from the, this early chapter of Luke's Gospel. So we're reading, again, the birth narratives, um, we're, we're reading about um, Gabriel coming to announce the birth to Mary, and we're reading about John's birth, which is um, before Christ's, um, all over again. And, and actually, Christmas isn't all that long ago. Um, and so it's very odd, perhaps, to be reading um, again these birth narratives, these early um, narratives of the life of Christ. So soon after Christmas, and so soon after Easter, when we're celebrating the resurrection and the new life that has been born. And actually that's why we're reading these again, um, because um, between now and Pentecost we're reliving our birth of our faith. We're thinking about um, how our faith comes, our own vocations, um, vocation being a, a big word that is often thought about as um, the priesthood. It, it, is a vocation. We sometimes talk about nurses and, and doctors having a vocation, but actually we all have a vocation, something that God wants us to do, whether we're um, 
very caring people, caring for our neighbours, if we're very clever at particular things, we have gifts and a use for those gifts. And this is a time um, between now and Pentecost when we think about our own vocations and our own faith and finding God again, finding the beginnings of our faith again. And John and, uh, um, sorry, Elizabeth and Zechariah very much realised that they had um, this child and a vocation themselves to bring this child up to know God. Um, and I just dropped my Bible on the floor. Um, it's a really big responsibility. And actually history tells us um, that John and Elizabeth didn't live all that much longer and they didn't live to see um, John in the wilderness proclaiming the new Messiah. Um, and perhaps it's a good thing they didn't live because we all know what happened to John <laughs> in the end. Um, and uh, parents would only be reunited in heaven. They wouldn't have had to have lived through that, seeing their son beheaded. So what happened to John after his parents died? Um, well, it's widely thought that he was brought up um, in a, uh, a religious sect um, called the Essenes. Um, and they lived in the, in the desert near the Dead Sea uh, in an area called Qumran. Um, and you might be now thinking, oh, yes, that's where the Dead Sea Scrolls came from. And you'd be right. And it's thought that the Essenes wrote those and, and kept them secure and hid them away, which is why we have them today. So it was the Essenes who brought John up in the faith. And they very much um, were Messianic. They, they expected the Messiah to come. Uh, and they were very much like the Pharisees, actually. Um, they um, followed the law to the letter. And um, the difference between them is that they hid themselves away. They're the Pharisees, as we read very much in our Gospels, are out there making sure everyone's doing the right thing and, and were very against, um, and, uh, against Christ and um, uh, worried and afraid of what Christ was, was bringing. The Essenes kept themselves very separate, but kept to the letter of the law. And so it's from this foundation, um, from the early on his parents' foundation and then later in the group that he was brought up into, that um, helps to shape John into what he becomes, which is, from the very beginning, the forerunner, the one that points the way to Christ. So let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the vocation that you give to each one of us. Help us in this time of quiet and peace to come closer to you, to come and know what it is that you have brought us to, what it is that you require of us. Help us to get closer to you, to know you better, to rely on you and to know that you are ever beside us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father God, in this strange time of isolation, of being scared of what might be outside of our homes. We pray for all of those who are affected by this virus, those who are unwell, those who have family members that they can't get to who are unwell. For all of those we worry about and keep in our hearts, we lift them to you now, Lord. We give thanks for all of those who are working still, and particularly those who have been working on the front line and have given their lives in the service of others. Lord, be close to those who mourn. Be close to those who grieve. Show them your mercy and your love. In Jesus' name. Amen. 
And Father God, we lift to you our world. So affected by this virus. But where life goes on and where there are still difficulties. Lord, we know it is always the poor who suffer most. And we pray for all those places around the world where there is poverty, where there is still war, where there has been natural disaster. We pray a way out of this coronavirus time. We pray a way where all people will be able to live full and happy lives. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. So Father God, we pray for all of those who are in charge of countries. We pray for our governments, for all leaders, for medical advisors. We pray for all of those who are looking towards the future. The economists. For leaders all around the world. We pray that this will lead us into a better way of living, a world that lives together in unison and helps each other. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So Father God, we particularly lift up to you this morning all of those whom we are worried about, all those in our own hearts and minds, all those we name to you now in our hearts or out loud. Father, be with them wherever they are and let them know your grace and your peace. And so lifting all our own prayers and thoughts up to the Lord, we pray as Jesus taught us, rejoicing in God's new creation. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so, may the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.